Shalom and aloha. So I'm coming on tonight not to do an activation, uh, activation reading. That was yesterday, was our weekly activation. So if you missed that, it's on my Facebook wall, Rivka Magic, or you can check it out on youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic with a CK. Those happen every week. This is a little something different that I wanted to share. And the title here is Becoming Holy You in reference to this sort of rebirth that's happening, which happens every year at this time of year, springtime, where I'm living. Um, so I just want to relate to that theme of rebirth that even if it's not springtime where you are, there inevitably is a spring and there inev inevitably is a time for that rebirth. And really in each moment we're rebirthing. So this concept of rebirthing is always relative in one way or another. So right now, especially for those experiencing springtime, I think you can feel that rising up. It's not quite summertime yet. We're already deep into spring. But how can we fully access the gifts of this season within ourselves so that we can be best prepared for the themes that come with summertime? Right? And I think that this rebirth is all about how can we re be reborn in our in, in our fullest sense, in the fullest sense, how can we fully take advantage of this idea of rebirth? And again, it doesn't matter if it's not springtime where you are, there's always this opportunity to be reborn in each moment. We can always make a change. We can always take a new path. We can always try harder, do better. So with that said, how can we be our best self right now? How can we say, all right, I'm ready to be the most well-rounded version of myself right now, the best version of myself that I can possibly be at this time with what I know and with what I have at my disposal? Because there's always room for more growth, but every year it's like we push more and more. Every year it's like there's a new limit set, you know? So this year, in this moment, with what we have, with where we are at right now, how can I make the most of this rebirth? How can I be whole? And the tarot is all about this becoming whole. The tarot, beyond just being a deck of cards, is a story. Tarot means royal path in Egyptian. And it's a story of these archetypes walking you through the process of enlightenment from beginning to end. So starting with the fool, you begin this journey of spiritual evolution, the evolution of consciousness. And you walk through these different archetypal phases as a sequence, gathering knowledge and wisdom and these lessons. And so they help you to kind of look at all of the parts of yourself as they work together in harmony. They help you to not become stuck on just one part of the story, but to see, hey, what's the next part of the story? And upon my examining that, <clears throat> that progression, how can that inspire me to move ahead, to move forward? <clears throat> so understanding the archetypes kind of gives you a way to see where am I at in the story? Which character am I most relating to right now? That means that I am archetypally relating to the lessons of this card or this arcanum. Therefore, if I look to the card before it, I can see maybe how I got here. And if I look to the card after it, I can see where I'm headed. And I can begin to be inspired by that uh, futuristic vision and call in my future readily in a way that's more prepared, inviting the next step so that it comes, you know. Um, what you seek is seeking you. So when you find out this next step on the path, you can just call it in with more awareness when you understand these these archetypes so i see this going from spring into summer very well depicted by the activation yesterday actually so i'll talk first about those two cards it was the sun and the knight of cups and the way i see it is like we are that knight holding that holy grail of the heart prioritizing it showing it off and riding into the sun with that cup. And so to me, that symbolizes like we're riding into the summer, into the sun, going toward the radiance of our fullest expression, but making sure that we're doing it from that space of the heart. 
and knights or horsemen are thoughts. So it's about thoughts of the heart. We're keeping the heart, the grail in mind as we ride into this space to express ourselves most fully. So that expression is a representation of what is there in the heart. So springtime, I see that as that grail. I mean, the eternal spring within, that's the grail. So to me, that very well can be represented by the Knight of Cups, right? And riding into the summertime, the sun. I mean, this is like perfect symbolism to represent moving from spring to the summer. And again, it doesn't matter if it's not springtime where you are. This is all symbolic. It's all archetypal. So how can we be whole and make sure we're not getting stuck on one part of the story? How can we relate to this in a way that makes sense? I'll put it to you this way. So many of us focus on one aspect of ourselves. We relate so much to only one archetype or one facet of who we are that we forget about the others. And one clear example of this is in astrology. So many people say, I am my sun sign. I am an Aquarius. I'm an Aquarius, 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 Aquarius. So then all of the symbolism and all of the signs associated with Aquarius are what you get bombarded with. It's what's reflected back to you because you identify with this Aquarius sun. And so you're going to receive that reflection from the universe. And so you're going to fall deeper and deeper into this attachment with this one facet of who you are or this one idea or image of who you are. But why should we limit ourselves to this one reflection of who we are? We're also the moon and we're also the, our rising sign and we're also every aspect of our charts or our blueprint, right, of the stars. And it doesn't matter what type of astrology you follow. I'm talking about esoteric astrology, which is at the root of all systems, I'm talking about your star imprint, which we all receive when we're born, because when we're born, everything in the firmament was positioned as it was for a reason, because everything is intentional. Everything is divinely designed. So how can we be only one of those aspects? We're all of those aspects. You and I are the entire wheel. We're the entire zodiac. We are all of the 12 archetypes being expressed differently. We all have the same centers, same channels or chakras, whatever you want to call them, wheels of light. And we're just emitting the same things, but in different frequencies and in different patterns. But we are all the all. So we would do well to not be so stuck on just one aspect. Oh, I'm so my moon sign. I'm so my sun sign. I'm so, you know, in my rising, I act like this. Make sure you're focusing on all of the different signs. The way I see it to make it easy is to focus on the whole wheel and ask myself, how am I expressing each of these signs in my life? How am I utilizing the archetypal powers of all, each and all of the 12 signs in my life? In one simple example, I can show you how each one of us is all of these signs. Look at your body, for example. We have these bodies and each part of our body is associated with a different zodiacal archetype. So we all have all of these parts and therefore all of these connections and associations with these archetypes, with all of them. Do you have ankles? That's an Aquarian point. So physically that's where you, know, you can connect to this archetype by connecting to that part of your body, your ankles. So that's just one example. So the tarot is here, these archetypes, these characters are here to tell us, don't stop at any one part of the story. Don't tell yourself, you know, that I only identify with one character. When you're doing that, it will help to look at the next card in the progression of the story. So for example, a big one we can all relate to is the devil in ancient Egypt known as the black magician. I happen to have the card out. Okay, I definitely prefer the Brotherhood of Light Egyptian deck, but here you go. So the devil or the black magician, we've all been there. And it's all about material entanglement, going through the necessary darkness to eventually, ultimately, inevitably come to the light. It's a necessary step on the path because when we come into this life, we find out where we need to grow and what we need to learn by the challenges that we go through. 
Otherwise, we wouldn't have any direction. Our challenges direct us to a higher path. Without that reference point, we will have no material on which to reflect to find the opposite, which is the thing that we're needing to integrate into our life experience, our soul's experience for our soul's progression. So for example, we may be stuck here in this place that we all are so familiar with. And we may feel despair, depression. I feel so attached to the pain and the struggles in my life. I feel chained. I feel that I'll never get out of this. I've become a slave to my addictions, to my pleasures, overindulgence, lies, whatever it is, right? We've all been there and thank God because that's how we grow. But how do we move out of that space of saying, God, I feel so chained to this reality. I'll never get out of it. We could look at the next card, 16, which is called the tower in most modern decks and in the Rider Waite deck, but in the ancient Egypt version, it's called the lightning. And in my opinion, that's the better name because the lightning is the key here in this card. Sure, the tower is a big part of it, but the lightning is the thing that destroys the tower. And that lightning is the light inside of you manifesting as the most powerful form of light. That's why it's represented by lightning to show you that it's time to make a change. It's time to destroy that old reality that's not serving anyone and move on. So we can see, like, we could either get stuck in the devil or the black magician and say, I'm never going to get out of this. I'm chained to my problems. I don't see a way out. Or we could say, oh, yeah, I remember that I can use the wisdom of the tarot, which is a story of my own DNA. It's written into my own DNA. I can call upon these archetypes to light the way, to guide me out of this mess. And we can say, what's next? Oh, the tower, the lightning. It's inevitable that I'm going to make it out of this mess. And either I'm going to initiate the change and destroy like that mighty lightning all in my life that is no longer serving. Or I'm going to continue in my shit until it eventually collapses anyway. Because that is inevitable. The this, this story is showing you the inevitability of the progression of the evolution of consciousness. It's unavoidable. So at this point in the story, you rather than say... I'm stuck in my problems and I'm chained and I'm bound to this shit forever. No, then you'd say, what's next? Okay, I've got to accept that it's time to make a change and pull the rug out from under myself or it's going to be pulled out from under me. And sometimes it takes lifetimes. Do you really want to wait that long? Do your research. Find out what the tarot is based on. This is the Zohar. This is a technology that is built into our very DNA. So you can study that to form your own trust an understanding in this story of the royal path. And I suggest you do because there you'll find that it's unfailing. It tells the truth. When you are in one part of the story and you look to the future part, that's where you're headed. And I've, ne I've never seen a time where it was unclear for somebody. Anytime I've done a private reading, and I've done many over the years, anytime I've done a reading for anybody in, at any state of belief or any uh, level of understanding or not of the tarot, they all can agree, yes, that's obviously the way that this is headed. I mean, it's inevitable. The only time we don't see that is because of our own cognitive dissonance or a veil that we put up because we don't want to accept it. And that's the, kind of the whole story here between the devil and the tower. We're like, no, I, I feel stuck and I hate this, but I'm not willing to make the change. So I'm going to be stuck in my shit until I finally learn the lesson, until the universe, maybe this lifetime, maybe many lifetimes, eventually breaks down what's not real and forces me to learn my lesson anyway. So the tarot helps you to move it ahead. You can look in your life and say, what are the themes? What is my lesson right now? Find that part of the story. And then you can see the succeeding card and know where you're headed. Then you have some inspiration to begin to envision your future, to begin to call it in with your conscious awareness and your fullest presence and participation. So that's one example with the devil and the tower. I also wrote down here to show you guys the fool and the magician. So at the very beginning of the story, we're the fool, right? And we're about to go on this journey. And he's got this little bitty sack here on the end of the stick. And that's all he needs. He's like, yeah, that's, and I got this flower. I'm good to go, bro. Good to go. The flower is representing his purity and his innocence. And this tiny sack is just, it's displaying the fact that he knows he has everything that he needs within him. 
He's leading a minimalist lifestyle because what else does he need? He has everything inside of him to begin this journey. So he sets out on his journey and then we begin with number one, the magician. And if you look at the magician's table, he has an item from each of the suits. He has sword, a sword, cup, pentacle, and a wand. So he has the four elements. He's made of these elements and he is able to work with these elements inside of himself and in all of his reflected world around him to accomplish whatever mission he is on, that divine mission that he's on. But if you look at these symbols, it goes way deeper than what's just in the image. Each of these elements can be further dissected into the three associated zodiacal archetypes. So for example, he could say, you know what? I'm really needing to be inspired. I really need to work with the fire element. So he picks up his wand, he closes his eyes, and he meditates on this power of the fire element as it is one with him. And he dissects it into the three fire signs. And he says, okay, let's, considering I am the whole wheel, I am all of the archetypes and I'm not just one, let me take that into account. Let me see how I'm giving attention or not giving attention to all the different parts of myself. So he picks up that wand and he says, okay, what are my fire signs? Okay, let's start with Leo. How is my confidence lately? Am I being too cocky? Or am I being confident in a way that is justified and righteous and helpful for the world? Leo is ruled by the sun and the heart. How am I shining my soul's expression? How is my solar plexus? How's my power center lately? Am I expressing my confidence and, and my self-expression from the heart? Am I using my ego as a vessel for the soul's expression? Hmm, have I been doing that? Maybe not, maybe because I'm this, uh, you know, a person who's obsessed with this only one reflection of myself as an Aquarius sun. And so maybe I've been so obsessed with that one angle that I've missed that peripheral insight on that Leo aspect that is within me and within each one of us. So maybe I haven't been doing that enough. Then I move to another fire sign. I move to Aries and I say, how have I been a leader or how have I not? How have I been giving up my power to somebody else, pretending that they are a better leader to lead my life than I am? How have I been confident in my physicality, keeping my body and my vessel healthy? How have I been staying youthful? and maintaining this intention to vivify life. That's Aries. How am I animating my expression to its fullest potential to really feel my experience and interact with the world around me to best understand my own self through my reflections, through the reflection of my expression? That's all Aries. And then we move to the Sagittarius and we say, okay, how am I allowing my soul the freedom to be? How, how have I maybe been restricting that freedom? How can I maybe travel, take a trip with Sagittarius? How can I travel and expand my knowledge, my worldly knowledge? How can I use all of my past experiences to move ahead with more grace and more ease than ever before? These are all, that's all Sagittarius. So there you go, you have the three fire signs. He might say, you know what? I'm really needing help with my emotions. So he picks up the cup. And he meditates on the three water signs. Maybe I haven't been focusing on my Scorpio aspect enough because it's not very prominent in my birth chart. Who gives a shit? I'm telling you, throw your birth chart out the window for this moment. Because I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't have value. It's extremely valuable. But for this moment, the starting point on the path to becoming whole, we don't want to dive right into all these shapes and exact equations and angles and numbers and the intricacies of the whole chart. We want to simplify at first and we want to just start with the elements and then break each of the four elements up into the three signs, relating to them as a whole, as a story, as these archetypes and not just your design, right? Because that's how we tend to neglect certain signs that are maybe not as prominent in our birth chart. So you pick up the cup and you say, I'm ready to heal my emotions and I'm ready to use the water element to progress on my path. So you can start with Scorpio and say, okay, maybe I've been ignoring that because I don't have Scorpio as my, you know, one of my three main signs that I'm always obsessed with focusing on, like rising moon and sun. 
So Scorpio, I'm going to pay you some attention. Hmm. Have I been going to those depths? Hello, Scorpio full moon right now, right now. Have I been going to those depths to make sure that I'm really diving as deep as possible to uncover those most hidden aspects of myself so I can really get to the goods? Have I been doing that? You know, have I been doing that? Pisces, have I been allowing myself to dream? Have I been remembering my dreams? Have I been seeding intentions as I'm falling asleep into my dreams? Have I been addressing my hidden fears? How am I handling my emotions when it feels overwhelming? What do I do? Who do I turn to? How do I help myself to internalize these things? You know, so you can go through each of these four elements by using each of the tools and ask yourself, okay? So then an example for, for air, the air element. How have I been with my Gemini self? Have I been social enough? Because that's, that's also a healthy aspect of becoming whole is the socialization, right? So have I been social to the extent that is necessary and healthy at this time in my life? To the extent that would be for the highest good of the one? Have I been social enough to meet that requirement for the plan right now? You know, um, Libra, Aquarius, ask yourself, how have I been in those themes? Have I been seeking balance in my life? Have I been paying attention to those things that need balance? Have I been bringing my offerings to the community, Aquarius? Have I been creating altruism in my community? Have I been prioritizing altruism and, um, you know, intellectualism? And am I using technology appropriately? So it goes so deep. The magician appears to only have these four simple tools on his table, but he really has everything he needs within those four symbols because it, within the four elements are the three zodiacal signs that correlate to each. And you are all 12 of these signs. And bet, bet you have been leaving one or another out or at least favoriting one reflection of yourself over another or maybe multiple of them, but there's one or two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe even 11 out of the 12 that you've been neglecting. And I say you and I'm talking to myself because I'm, I know everything is one. And so I'm saying this because these are realizations that I'm coming to and I wanna share them with you guys. And it never ends, it, it can always go deeper because as we move through life, we gather knowledge, we cultivate knowledge, which we then can deposit into our uh, sources of wisdom to deepen them. So it's never ending, of course, but I'm sharing this with you guys because I think that it can help to sometimes just simplify things, take a step back from the intricacies of the birth chart or maybe all the different readings that you've gotten from different people and from different astrological systems and the I Ching and the human design and da 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 And it's so awesome. Trust me, it's awesome. I love it. I study these things myself. But I'm saying we must have the right starting point before we dive into all of that intricacy. We must remember the simplicity that we are one, that we are the many within the one. And I'm not just my sun sign, and I'm not just my moon sign, and I'm not just my sun, moon, and rising sign, and I'm, and I'm not just the degrees of each of the signs and the houses. I'm simply all of these archetypes working in harmony as one unit inside. So how can you go through the wheel moving from Aries and coming all the way around to Pisces? How can you go through each of these houses and ask yourself, hmm, how do I relate to this character? I invite you to even write down numbers one through 12 and their associated signs, starting with Aries, ending with Pisces, and write down, you know, just journal about it. How do I relate to each of these signs? Write the element, you know, show the element that it's associated with. Make sure you, you know, you could even write all the fire signs in a certain color, all of the earth signs in a certain color, just to show that how they're grouped. That way you, as the magician, when you're needing some guidance, when you need some self-help tools, you can say, all right, let me begin with the most simplified system of the four elements and work from there. And you ask yourself, what is it that I'm needing right now? I need inspiration, I need passion, that's the fire. That's the wand. You go into those three fire signs and ask, where have you been? Where, where can you, not where have you been neglecting? Don't, 
sometimes that can lead you into a trap where then you self-sabotage and then you end up just going into this hole of, I hate myself, I'm not enough. Don't do that, okay? Just see maybe where you've neglected it if, if you're mature enough to be able to stop yourself from going down that hole, you know? But what's more important is to see where can I be more of this? Maybe not where have I not been enough, but where can I be more? How can I find each of these signs to be super helpful? Because there's gold waiting there. Okay, so you might say, oh my gosh, my heart is really hurting and I need to get over this relationship. Or I'm feeling really depressed. My heart, my cup, cu the grail of my heart doesn't feel like it's overflowing. So I'm going to pick up my cup and I'm going to begin to self-heal. And I'm going to say, what are the three water signs? How have I been neglecting them or maybe not? How can I be more of one of these signs, right? If you're brave enough, you can ask, where have I been neglecting? Sometimes it's helpful. Like I said, it really depends on where you're at. But the more important thing is asking, how can I be more of these things? And sometimes from there, you might even want to go to all of the elements and say, let me just make sure. Let me start with the element that I, you know, my ego mind, my human mind thinks I need to work on. But just as far as like, uh, you know, creating a system of checks and balances, I'm going to go through each of the tools or each of the suits and just kind of check up on each part of my being, my emotional being, my mental being, my physical being, and my spiritual being. That's it. There's only four, only four elements, only four. That's it. And then it goes into the 12, but only the four is what you need to start with. It simplifies everything. You can say, let me check on my emotions. Let me check on my physical body because they all work together. And chances are, if your intuition is telling you to focus on one over another, there's something there. So start there. But don't hesitate to do that system of checks and balances and go into the other elements and see how maybe one of the 12 archetypes is waiting for you to say, hey, I'm ready for our alliance. I'm ready to open up to your guidance and I'm ready for you to use me as a vessel to make the magic happen, to make the healing work, to self-heal, to be my best so that I can be what the world needs. So that's really why the magician only has these four tools. You may only see four there, but within each one, there are three because three makes the completion. Three makes a whole. You know, you hear the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Mother, Father, Baby. So each of the tools on the table, each of the elements has three zodiac signs. You are all 12. So going deeper with that, if you go into one of the signs and you want to get more in touch with that sign. Like, if, like I mentioned earlier with the ankles, if you want to get more in touch with Aquarius and you want to get to it through a mental aspect, an emotional aspect, physical aspect, start with your ankles. Massage your ankles. Just bring awareness to that space and understand that that association between that physical body part and that archetype will immediately put you in connection with that energy. It's a subconscious thing. It doesn't require your rational thinking, your rational mind. It's a physical thing. So you can immediately begin by connecting with the, the associated body part to that zodiac, zodiacal archetype. From there, you can say, okay, you know, what are the uh, aspects of Aquarius? How, you know, community, um, inventiveness, um, brotherhood, brotherhood of man, um, oneness, you know, all these things, whatever you guys, how do I relate to these things emotionally? Have I been giving them enough thought? What do I feel when I think of these things about Aquarius, you know, and this is how you want to really dissect any of the signs when you're going deeper into the element and into the zodiacal triplicity, you want to really dive deep. You want to begin to understand as the observer behind your thoughts, what is my relationship with each of these archetypes? Not just each of these tarot archetypes. I'm talking, what is my relationship with each of the elements? Let's start there, okay? Before the archetypes, let's start with the elements because they're archetypal as well in and of themselves. How do I relate to fire? How do I relate to water? How do I relate to earth? And how do I relate to air? You got to really ask yourself, what are my definitions of each of these elements? Because our subconscious definition, as well as our conscious, how we consciously see it, uh, is how we are embodying the elements and how we're responding to them. 
whether you have recognized that up until now or not, doesn't that make sense to you? However you define your reality is how you experience it. So however you define each of these elements is how you are experiencing it. So we better start really calling in our fullest presence and re-evaluating and redefining or at least fortifying our definitions, solidifying our definitions, making peace and having conscious clarity of these definitions. So we start there. You've got to really ask yourself, go through the four elements. How do I relate to it? What is the spiritual purpose of each of these elements? What is water? What is the spiritual purpose of water? Um, the Hebrew word that's a Hebrew letter that's associated with water is the mem. Uh, it's the word for mayim and shemaim, the water in the heavens. It's the primal water. It's the mother. It's the, the primordial womb, the waters of the cosmic womb. It's your feminine nature. You know, so you, you might want to make a word chart or, you know, make a little vision board for the elements and meditate on it, write things down, whatever, but define each of these elements as they're related to the divine and as they're related to you because you're made up of them. So however you define the elements is not only defining how you interact with them in the world and how you interact with yourself, but how you interact with the divine because nature is our connection to the divine. Nature is like an open book um, of divine law. Natural law is a conversion of universal law into this world. We are the stars and universal law embodied in these natural physical bodies. You know, so however you define these elements is profound. It either offers you further connection with the divinity that is inside of yourself and all around you, or it pulls you farther away from that. You maybe define the elements from a less than spiritual perspective and you see them maybe just as mundane, but nothing in this life is mundane. Everything is fecundated with purpose and spirit. Everything is divine. So start there, redefine the elements in their divine definition as they relate to you. And that's how you really become the magician, one hand up, one hand down, really understanding what he's made of, what his reality is made of, so he can be the best vessel for creative purposes and for divine manifestation. You've got to know the elements, you've got to define them, and you've got to have a clear, special, unique relationship with each one. If you don't have that, if, if your understanding of the elements is anything less than that, then your experience is going to reflect that. The deeper you feel connected to each of the elements in their divine definition, and the more strongly you consciously hold this in your mind, then the juicier your experience is going to be. That's just what it is. So if you have these tools in you, what else do you need? That's why he has the infinity sign around his head. He actually has an Ouroboro belt there, snake biting its own head, biting its tail, sorry. So that's all that he needs are these archetypes inside of him. So once you define these elements appropriately in their div divine definition, then you can begin to dissect them. You can say, all right, what are the three signs of water? What are the three air signs? What are the three earth signs? What, you know, and then from there, you can begin to give a divine definition to each of the 12 zodiac signs. So after the elements, you go and dive into each of the 12 zodiac signs. You take things even deeper. You begin to define these spiritually for yourself. They begin to have such significance for you in your mind and in your heart, that you actually develop a relationship with each of these 12 zodiacal signs. And the more you relate to them, the more you resonate with them. So the more you get in touch with their frequency and you're able to kind of call their power into, into you just by relating, because like attracts like. So the more deeply you understand a character the more readily you can begin to vibrate at its frequency. 
So just like you can do this with the elements, you could do this with every one of the 12 zodiacal signs. Just like you can also do with all of the archetypes of the tarot. When you form a bond and relationship with them, when you know them, especially spiritually, then you feel them inside of yourself. So when you form that relationship, the highest version of a relationship with these archetypes, you resonate with their frequency and you open up for their power to enter you, to fill you, because they're already inside. But you open up to be filled by their power. You allow them to grow and permeate your being until it flows out of you and does the magic for you out in the world. So that's why I say it's important to, you know, from this understanding, we can see obviously how the tarot would be a great way to study the archetypes. But I just want to say, start with the zodiac, start with the 12 signs before you feel the need to dive so deeply into tarot. What is your foundation? What is your foundational understanding of esoteric numerology, esoteric astrology? What is your understanding of those things before you dive into tarot? Because if you dive into these things first, you will have the best foundation to fully embrace the archetypal wisdom of the tarot. So start with the 12 zodiacal signs. And even before that, start with the four elements. Anyone can do this. Four elements, earth, air, water, fire. They're each associated with something different. Earth is your physicality. Earth is where you focus on your physical being. Maybe you look for medicines of the earth that can help you to fulfill whatever task, whatever mission you're on. You know, um, look to the actual physical elements for healing. You can look to the earth signs. You can look to Virgo. You know, you can look to Capricorn. You can look to these, these earthly guides and see how you've been using their wisdom. And then if you look to water, that's the whole suit of cups. That's emotions and the heart, air, the mind, your realizations, the air signs, fire, the fire signs. Okay, so anybody can get in touch with these, these elements and begin to redefine them all the way through to a spiritual sense so that you can really feel their definition as it relates to you and your personal life experience. Because the more personal, the better. You have to really feel these characters as they relate to you otherwise there is no bridge okay what happens when you develop that relationship with each of these characters it's getting hot now what happens when you develop a relationship with each of these characters is it it solidifies the neuro pathway in your brain that relates to that specific understanding and that neural pathway is reflected into your physical experience as an actual bridge you manifest a bridge to a, an experience of progression in this life. It's spiritual psychology. So first you redefine those elements and I'll give you a hint since we're bringing the tarot into this and we're talking about the magician. If you're wanting to work with fire, you're feeling you need that inspiration in your life, you need that um, upliftment, the spiritual, uh, the, the, the livening of your spiritual purpose, right? You've been feeling defeated or depressed. So you call upon the fire element. You can look to the entire suit of wands in the minor arcanum of the tarot. The minor arcanum are the minor details, okay? The major arcanum are the major secrets and the minor are the minor details are, that are an elaboration <clears throat> of the major cards of the deck. So each of the suits relates to those tools. So for example, if you're feeling that you need to work on, you know, the, the spiritual side of things and that passion in your life and the inspiration, look to the suit of wands. And from the ace all the way to the king, the wands will tell you a story of how you can progress using that particular element and those three associated signs. Okay, so you start with the ace, for example. The aces in the minor arcanum are all about the raw power of that element. So the ace of wands would be the raw power of fire. And you start there because that starting point is serves to be a reminder that you have all that you need within you to make it to the king of that suit, to master that suit, to wear the crown in the suit of wands. So you start off with this great fiery initiation because the aces are initiations. It's saying, remember, there's no excuse. You have this fire within you, okay? 
Then you move to the two of wands and it's all about opportunity. Then the three of wands is about taking action upon that opportunity. And then the four of wands is about succeeding in that opportunity. So it tells a story. So this is a little bit deeper. This is a little bit for, you know, people who kind of already have a foundation or are interested in going deeper with tarot. If you know which element you're working on, Mr. or Mrs. Magician, you know which tool you're going to pick up, you know which element, then look to the associated suit. If you need help with your emotions, you need emotional guidance, pick up that cup and meditate on the suit of cups and look at that suit from ace to king and it will tell you what you need to do. It's literally a, an, an operation manual. It's a guide. This is a technology that will help you in very specific ways if you just look a little more closely. So it will tell you what you need to do. It will tell you the next step. All you have to do is look to that suit. You see how the tarot isn't just uh, some form of divination where you shuffle the cards around and then you pick a card and they tell you what your fate is. That's not how this works at all. The cards can be used in so many ways that people have no idea about. And that's why my story, which by the way is now available on the Amazon Marketplace, it's called The Royal Path, Activating the Archetypal Alliance Within. You can order from Amazon or you can private message me and I can send you a copy with a personalized note or, or nothing, just as it is if you'd like. But this story, it tells about the tarot in a different way, from a different approach. And that's what I'm trying to share with you guys at this time right now. It's like the tarot is not just about choosing cards and it's going to tell you what's going to happen or what you need to know. It doesn't work like that. First of all, the tarot never just gives you answers. The tarot uncovers the deeper questions behind the more mundane questions you ask. So you leave the reading contemplating in a more correct direction. It refines your uh, direction, your energetic direction, your mental direction, even your physical direction. And you use your own free will to, you know, determine which way to go, to determine the answer. The tarot doesn't just give it to you. And so that opens up this idea that you don't need to just use the tarot in such a limited way where you follow one person's operation, you know, guide to, okay, I have to pull this many cards and it's telling me exactly this. They're, they're a story, so you can use it however you wish. There are no limits. There are no limits. So I'm trying to offer you a different approach as the magician, understanding that the elements are all you need to heal and within each of the elements are the three zodiac signs to take it deeper. If you know which element you need to work on, oh, it's my heart. My heart is what's hurting, so it's emotions, it's water. Oh, it's my spirit, I feel down, I'm, I need to remember my purpose. Oh, that's fire, that's wands. Oh, I'm going through some challenges in my life right now and I need the courage and the strength. Oh, that's swords. Oh, I'm going through, um, how do I apply my realizations to my reality? How, how do I manipulate my physical reality to best accommodate what I'm trying to manifest. Oh, that's coins. That's pentacles. That's all you need to know is the four suits. And then you can access the story within that suit. Like I said, from ace to king. And that specific story within the deck can be extracted to hit right on the nail of where you're at and, and what you need to do. So this is a story. The tarot is a story. It's an archetypal story. And before even diving into its complexities, you can focus just on the elements alone because that's what this is all founded on. The tarot is a story of the one being multiplied and expressed in its many different ways. So you can simplify it and go back to the original four, the original elements, and just work from there. But the main point of this video, you guys, for those of you who are still tuned in, congratulations, you made it this far. The main point of this video is to tell you that we are all of the 12 zodiacal signs. You're not just your sun sign. You're not just your sun, moon rising. You're not the angles and the numbers of your chart. You are everything. And we don't want to limit ourselves to one reflection or one aspect of who we are. We want to keep the ball rolling, keep the story flowing, keep telling it, keep going. Don't become stuck in one part of the story because what that's reflecting is that you are stuck and you don't know how to progress. And that's where the tarot comes in handy. It shows you what to visualize next. It helps you remember like, oh yeah, this is inevitably what's on its way. So I may as well call it in and flow with that. You don't want to be stuck. You want to keep the real going. 
And so that's what the 12 zodiac signs helps us to do too. It helps us to just kind of throw out the story, get out of the, the blueprint, the design, the birth chart or whatever, it, you know, human design, whatever. Get out of that for a second. See the 12 zodiac signs. How are you remembering to be each of those? How are you giving that all attention? And like I said, each part of uh, your body is associated with a different zodiac sign. So are you giving your whole body attention and love? Like, are you remembering every toe on both of your feet? Are you remembering arm, your arms on either side of your body? Are you, um, are you exercising both sides of your brain, right and left? Balance. Because chances are whatever body part you're neglecting has some relation to which archetype or which zodiacal sign you're neglecting. Don't just focus on those highlighted aspects of your chart. Simplify, remember, every one of us is all of these archetypes. Especially the ones that are less prominent in your chart are the ones you need to focus on because they're the ones that are neglected and they're, they're the ones that need to be uncovered and attended to. They're hidden for a reason so that you have to work to find them, just like God hid our light inside of ourselves and the Kabbalists, Kabbalists put it in a way that it's a cosmic game of hide and seek. It's the same thing. You think it's gonna be obvious? You think your soul said, yeah, sure, make it easy for me. No, no. Your soul said, hide it, make it fun, make it challenging. I want this to be a good game of hide and seek. Don't you dare make it easy for me. So for example, if you're doing your numerology and you're using some equations and you see certain numbers popping up in your chart a lot. My whole chart is sevens and nines, sevens and nines, sevens and nines. So that means that I came into this life already really embodying those themes of those numbers and the associated archetypes. But I don't want to sit around only identifying with those two numbers for the rest of my life. You see, I'm all the numbers. So I'm going to look for those numbers that I feel the least familiar with. And I'm gonna look for those archetypal themes that I feel the most uncomfortable with. And I'm gonna say, that's what I need to work on. And for those of you who are astrology nerds, south node, north node, you know, south node is who you came into this life as comfortably. Maybe you've lived many lifetimes as this energy. And the north node is who you came here to be. That opposite side so that you can come to that balance in this life through your south node to your north node. That's what it's all about. Using who you uniquely are, the skin that you're comfortable in, to transform into something new. Finding the balance. That's why we come here. Not to be comfortable, not for things to be easy, but so that we can be challenged, so that we can uncover and discover those parts of ourself that are waiting to be seen and expressed. The most hidden parts are the most fun. And the most challenging things are the ones that we need to be the most brave and walk straight toward. So again, for those of you just tuning in, begin with the elements, start there, redefine each of the four elements as they relate to you and as they relate to the divine. Okay, it's so clear, think about it. Water, the heart, fire, the spirit. How do you look at these elements and how are you giving them attention or how are you not giving them attention every day as they exist inside of you and all around you? Redefine them. When you feel comfortable with your definition of the four elements, take it deeper. Dissect each of the four elements into their three zodiac signs that are associated and ask yourself, how can I, looking at these three signs I'm focusing on within any one of the particular elements, how can I access their wisdom? Hmm, wow, I, I, you know, I'm needing help with water and I'm noticing when I look at the water signs that perhaps I haven't been accessing this scorpion wisdom because I've been forgetting that it's a part of me because maybe it's not right there as a highlighted part of my birth chart, but I must know that it's inside of me because they all are. And especially if I haven't been seeing it, it's the one that's waiting to be found. Hide and seek, right? Hide and seek. So um, I have... Um, I have all of the Zodiac actually tattooed on me here. So I use it as a reminder, you know, to just that I'm all of them. I'm the whole wheel. Because it's easy to get stuck in one aspect of ourselves. You know, I hear so many people say, oh, I'm an introvert or I'm an extrovert. Don't limit yourself. Be careful that you're not telling the same story over and over, a narrative that maybe 
doesn't even serve you anymore. God, I'm such a hermit. I'm such a hermit. I'm su then that's all you'll ever be. Do you always want to be a hermit? Because that to me doesn't make sense because the only constant in life is change. And so if our attitude and our, our response to life is not reflecting that shift, that constant change, something's up. Because there are certain parts of our experience of growth in life and in consciousness and you know, in our spiritual evolution that requires the hermit. And there are other parts that requires the other archetypes, the sun to express what your soul needs you to express, which cannot be done in the darkness of a cave or in your solitude. There's a time for Moses to go up the mountain and there's a time for him to come back down and bring what he gathered there into the community. See, we need to be each of these archetypes. We need to constantly check in with each one of them and ask, how am I fulfilling this role in my life? How can I stop telling this limited story about myself pretending I'm one archetype when I'm all of them? When of course I'm all of them, holy shit. If I'm only one archetype, then I'm only gonna have that one small set of skills to respond to life with every single time. No, we want to be well-rounded. We want to be whole. So again, look at the wheel of the 12 zodiacal signs and begin to develop a relationship with each of these zodiacal archetypes and ask yourself, how can I use these in my life? You know, constantly ask yourself, what is the best one for today? What is the best one for this experience right now? How can I see myself as this whole wheel rather than just the limitations of my chart? And then from there you can say, okay, and then how are these aspects expressed in my chart? How am I naturally, instinctively guided to use these forces? And maybe how have I been doing so unconsciously? And how can I do so more presently, more consciously, with more awareness now? You know, so understand, look at that wheel and say, how am I relating to each of these archetypes? How can I develop a bond and alliance with each one of them? And from there, you can see what your relationship is to each of the elements. Oh, well, maybe if I have been missing one of these 12 archetypes, there's a hole in my water element, for example, if I haven't been relating to Pisces, let's say, okay, or haven't been relating to Scorpio. Maybe there's something missing from my water element, maybe from my heart or my emotional expression or my ability to emotionally guide myself you know emotional mastery there's something there waiting to be discovered or i could say you know maybe there's uh, something in my fire like i'm not very confident i don't feel like i have the power to be a leader hmm, maybe i have some lessons with the fire element and then you can pick up the fire suit in the minor arcanum and you can get further inspiration there so that's all I really wanted to talk about, you guys. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this. You are a whole and holy being. It's the Scorpio full moon. Dive deep. Make the best of this rebirth right now so that you can be holy yourself. And it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Just think of the elements. Redefine those. Think of their associated signs. Know that you are all of them and you are not only one and that life requires you to constantly shift your expression to be able to best respond. And if you're only de you know, developed in one area, if you're stuck in one part of the story, it's time to get the ball rolling. It's time to continue the sequence. It's time to look ahead at what the inevitable uh, future is going to be accept it in your heart now take the reins and begin to visualize what you want it to look like when you approach that time so that you can guide yourself into the inevitable change rather than feeling overwhelmed by it so you are the wheel you are the many within the one you are guided you are protected have fun learn the roles and play them well <laughs> i'll see you guys soon shalom